Hello, uh, welcome to another episode of 10 for the Chairman. For those of you who haven't watched this before, this is where I take 10 questions from the subscribers and answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, questions obviously about Star Citizen and Squadron 42. And our subscribers are a subset of our community that uh, contribute money every month to allow us to do enhanced community content. So this show, Around the Verse, a bunch of other things we do like Bug Smashers, um, as well as the Jump Point magazine, which is usually 40 to 70 pages of behind the scenes uh, material on the development of Star Citizen. It's a really great read if you haven't uh, read it. It has sort of in-depth uh, dives on how we design and concept spaceships, do game mechanics, lore about various parts of the galaxy, and has fiction. And um, uh, it's edited by David Ladenman, who does a fantastic job and has various contributors from around our company um, contributing great stuff to it. So anyway, I'd recommend checking that out. Uh, but yeah, the subscribers make all this possible, so thank you very much, and um, obviously thank you to everyone that's backed the game because combination of all the backers and subscribers would I wouldn't be sitting here if that wasn't the case. Um, so anyway, so I answer. I have these ten questions. Uh, speaking of backers of the game, we got a couple of uh, little um, gifts that sort of came in this week, which is kind of cool because the last few times I've sort of asked uh, uh, various folks like Jared and Thomas, going, kind of like, "Hey, we do have any cool stuff?" And it was pretty barren for a while, and you know, I was a sad puppy and. Now we've got some cool stuff. So uh, look, we've got a cool star citizen. This is from the yeah. FMG operations. Never outgunned, only outnumbered. Um, and this was sent from uh, Space Ghost. Um, and the cool patches. So you want to so on. Not necessarily on this sweater. Um, looks like a challenge coin, but done as a key ring. And uh, some pretty cool uh, little sort of pins. Star Citizen and the FM, FMG operation, so very cool. Anyway, that's actually kind of cool stuff. And then over here, uh, from Sniffle Wizard, who is AKA Windu Jackson, I think that's who he is in our in the game and in our forums. That little uh, cozies, which I believe he set to sent in here for every whole bunch of folks, like a community team, which is cool. And um, some yellow dog tags. If the various other dog tags we have out there aren't good enough, we also have a. The original ones with the black edges, I think, that we that we did here on uh, our side, and then there's some new metal ones. So um, pretty soon, everyone will be weighed down with dog tags. But anyway, that's very cool, matching yellow ones. So thank you, uh, Sniffle Wizard. So there you go. Anyway, so thanks for the the, the cool little uh, tchotchkes here, and um, I should probably get on to the ten questions. So uh, let's see. Let's start. The first question comes from Max Overseer, who asks, "I love flying around in Horus system, but I'm lost with." what and where things are at. Will our ships have something like the Ark Star Mount built in so we can at least know where I stand in the system? So I'm assuming that you mean the Stanton system, which is sort of where Crusader's based, and we just really have the area around uh, Crusader, although we are planning on expanding it in the near future to have the whole star system in. So uh, that will you know, be a whole bunch more. It'll sort of, that will sort of come with the debut of the procedural planets and a few other things, so uh, that's something to look forward to. Uh, but generally, you have... Um, Skyline, which is an app on your Moby Glass, which will be sort of your personal sort of um, star map. Um, so not too dissimilar to say what you can do on the web. And then we will have sort of a more in-depth um, nav map that ships will have, especially sort of the bigger ships that have charting and stuff like that. So like the Carrick will have sort of a big hollow table with a star map you can manipulate and look around. And the, sh the ships with sort of the more sophisticated nav computers will allow you to do sort of more planning, sharing uh, nav points and charting things with uh, your friends and as you just generally explore stuff. So yes, uh, you will have all that. Uh, that's actually one of the you know, key features when we expand out sort of the Stanton system to allow you to adventure around. So it's actually in, it's in work, it's in development. Um, it's you know, a fair amount of uh, engineering and we've got a bunch of sort of earlier UI, UX stuff that has to debut first, but uh, it definitely, will be there so you, um, you know, won't get lost and also will be able to sort of message your friends or give out your location and stuff like that. All right, next question comes from Matthewis who asks, hey Chris, I just finished flying a few of the ships that you let us fly during the free fly weekend that I currently don't own. I thought it was pretty cool, but I did have a question. In the verse, when we go to buy ships from a ship dealer, will there be an enclosed track shooting range for us to test out the ships before we buy them? That is a pretty good suggestion. I would, you know, we haven't necessarily thought about that, but one way probably to do that would be to allow someone that goes into a ship dealer to potentially sort of 
boot up a quick sim, which is essentially what we do in Arena Commander, to allow you to sort of feel you know, the sim version of the ship around and feel it for a bit. To, you know, so maybe you get a token to use that ship uh, inside sort of the Arena Commander sim pod um, to see if you like it or not, and then perhaps you can go buy it. So, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll consider that, because uh, you know, I think that's actually a pretty cool in-fiction, in-game way for people to maybe do a test drive. Um, so thanks, Matthew. Okay, next question comes from Blade of Akir, who asks, as more and more features are made live within the baby PU, such as persistence, what will happen at Go Live? Will the universe be reset to first positions a la Truman Show style, or will our current endeavors persist over the threshold? Again, that's another good question. So um, we haven't made a hard and fast rule of it. So the plan is with the current mini PU, um, especially when we start to debut pers persistence, uh, which will have some currency, it will be alpha UEC, and alpha UEC we can uh, reset at any time. We will still let you spend some of the actual proper UEC that you guys have collected or have been given. And in that case, we won't reset things that you have bought with that. Uh, and I think I mentioned this last week, but we also won't um, um, take those things back if you bought them with them. And we'll let you uh, sort of trade them in for the full UEC price. Whereas on the Alpha UEC, it'll be much more like how the final implementation will be. Whereas if you sort of buy a new ship or a new weapon, you come back to sell it back again, it will have taken some depreciation. Uh, so we'll occasionally reset uh, stuff. I think until we have the dynamic economy working uh, over quite a few star, star systems, we won't have sort of felt like everything's sort of balanced and free of exploits and glitches. So until then, we probably um, will sort of reserve the right to reset stuff. But there may very well be a case before we sort of consider it final go live that we just decide, oh, this is it. We're switching to proper UEC. Everything's stable enough, and we go from here. And things that at that point on that you build up or earn um, would stay with you. Although, to be honest with you, that probably is a pretty good definition of like go live. So um, that's kind of it. Like I said, not a hard and fast rule, but those are kind of the sort of thinking that we have as we're approaching it. Next question comes from Baitor, who asks, I have a question about EVA while moving. When I leave my moving ship, I instantly stop relative to the ship. Following Newton's law of motion, I should remain at the same speed as my ship and be able to do an EVA regardless of velocity, i.e. 2001 A Space Odyssey. Will this ever be an option in game? So this is something we've debated internally. The conflict with it is we sort of want to cap your individual player velocity so it doesn't become too big to control or arrest. For instance, your EVA pack doesn't have nearly uh, the amount of fuel or thrust power that, say, for instance, your spaceship would necessarily have. Um, although the other flip side of that is that you should inherit the velocity of your parent object. So if I step off a freelancer that's going 200 meters per second, um, I should probably be flying 200 meters per second. Um, or moving at 200 meters per second. Um, so we sort of go back and forth and have a debate on this because essentially what happens is the EVA system has several thresholds. One, it has a normal one, which I think is about 15 meters per second, and then it has sort of the boost one, which is 50 meters per second, I think, or maybe 100 meters per second. I, I honestly can't remember what that is. But those are sort of the ranges that it sort of caps you in in the same way that uh, ships themselves are sort of capped. And uh, you know, don't forget that um, you know there is only a certain amount of uh, thrust on your ship on your EVA pack. So there's a certain point where, um, just for instance, if you were like designing it so people couldn't get themselves in trouble, um, you probably would cap how fast you would let them accelerate to because they would need to have enough thrust available for them to decelerate back down to zero, or else you would you'd get up to a certain speed and you would never be able to stop unless someone else stopped you. And as an individual in an EVA suit, getting stopped when you're at a fast uh, speed would uh, either be uh, very painful, uh, fatal, or uh, would take someone um, you know, a lot of care to do. Uh, so that's kind of it. So we sort of have the, the sort of trade-off. I would think what we'd probably do is if you went out EVAing at speed, um, you would go out at speed and then it would bleed your speed down to sort of a more controllable amount. But you should inherit the velocity of your parent ship. Um, and yeah, I don't know whether it would let you open the airlock doors or get out when you're in cruise or anything really fast, but maybe at precision mode, definitely. And then SCM, um, you know, 
again, that would sort of depend on, say, maybe the speeds you were doing. Okay, next question comes from Serafina, who asks, will repairing on the fly or suturing wounds, etc., be something you'll have to get good at doing, or will it consist of clicking F where the game tells you to? So if we're talking about um, repairing you as a player, um, definitely the better or the deeper uh, fixing up, which is what we sort of call targeted uh, healing, uh, will require some element of skill. So the, the simple one is bam, med, pen, you know, just give myself a quick uh, sort of, uh, you know, whatever, whatever in the future we're doing it, you know, the sort of cortisone steroid boost, uh, that sort of, you know, adrenaline shot gets you back into it. Uh, but to actually do repair some, more, some greater damage, we're going to have a certain amount of sort of skill in terms of targeting and being able to apply it and all the rest of the stuff. Uh, and I would say to a certain level, we probably have that on the more complicated repairing um, as well. Uh, maybe if you're patching up a hole or something like that. We, it's the same kind of idea of mechanics where you know, we've been talking about for mining, where there's a certain amount of skill in drilling, you know, sort of using a laser at a certain frequency, gauging you know, how much uh, your, uh, you know, your frequency is, kind of what the vibration of the rocks that you're sort of drilling into, whether, you know, whether you're possibly penetrating some dangerous gases, all the rest of the stuff. So we'll, we will try to have some of the higher level stuff require some skill and the lower level stuff, like I said, just the med pen is bam, pop it, give you a sort of short term boost. But to really fix someone up or some ship up, we're going to have some level of player skill. All right, next question comes from Nimrod77, who asks, what plans for launch and recovery of single seat craft on capital ships? Etc. Will there be a catapult system or similar to the ones used on carriers today? Or will we simply take off like we do on a landing pad now? Will there be an arrestment system for landing on, a real, uh, on real aircraft carriers? Or will we just land as we do now on the landing pads in free flight? So on like the Idris and the Bengal, we're not really going to have a cap catapult system to the same level. We have a little bit where I think, I don't know if you showed it, but there's, a, you know, there's some blast um, I don't know what you would call them, shields that come up uh, on the flight deck. So when the gladiuses lift off and thrust away, it will sort of shield the back of the, first, the, the flight deck from the blast shields. But essentially, the, the sort of takeoff mechanism will be a lot like, if you remember the original Squadron 42 trailer that Hannes did, and he sort of saw the Hornets lift up like this to a hover position and then whoosh, accelerate out. Uh, so that's essentially how uh, you know, most single seat fighters will launch. Um, coming in, um, it'll be the same. They'll sort of come in and arrest. They'll have to match velocity with the, you know, the ship they're landing on, you know, the Bengal or the Idris or whatever other ship they're landing on. Uh, and then they'll sort of come in, sort of match velocity and land. It's actually trickier than one would think. Um, you know, we are actually doing landings on Idrises at the moment uh, on the development side. And there's been a few cases of people smashing into the address and the side of the walls. Uh, so one of actually the tasks that we're working on for the landing system is to sort of also have an automated uh, landing system for alignment and bring you in because, uh, you know, unless the ship you're landing on is not moving, uh, it actually becomes fairly tricky. So if you know if if you have say the address doing 100 meters per second and you're trying to land, uh, you're actually landing um, you know faster. And you got to be and if it's doing any movements or changing and you're doing any, it can be it can be challenging. Um, so we'll have the ability to sort of hook into the auto landing system or um, land manually yourself. Um, but it will be the same kind of landing pad mechanic where you'd come in. And then you know, you know, as you came, in, so basically you come in at 200. Your the IFCS would actually adjust your um, velocity so that um, you know, as you come inside, you're of course entering sort of the sort of the the ship itself, and so you're now inheriting the ship's velocity. So if I was going 200 meters a second and entering an address at 100 meters per second, once I've sort of crossed the threshold, I really relative would be um, traveling 100 meters per second to the Idris flight deck. Of course, we don't want to be really traveling at 100 meters per second when we're entering because that's way too fast. You probably want to be entering around about 100. If the ship was going 100 meters per second, the Idris, you probably want to be ending up sort of entering into it around about 100, I don't know, 20 meters per second or something. So there'll be some skill in doing it, uh, but it will be sort of more the landing pad variety and just making sure that you're um, coming through the opening of the door. 
Next question comes from Thunder Kraken, who asks, will there be cataclysmic events in the PU? Planets slash space stations blowing up stars going supernova, rogue meteor showers, mass migrations occurring, plague, etc. Would one day everyone be talking about a certain planet or places if it was a distant memory? So we are definitely going to do uh, cataclysmic events, acts of God. So that will be sort of more us on the PU, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, sort of game master side, where we'll sort of look at what's happening around in the universe, and then we'll sort of create occasional pockets of chaos. Maybe there's a famine over here. Uh, maybe there's a bit of civil war breaks out over here uh, that will sort of create events and missions for the players and the AI to participate in. Um, so we'll sort of look at it and you know there'll be places where people may have to give aid or come in to, to uh, you know uh, fight off a, you know a, a vandal incursion or all sorts of stuff um, and potentially you know space stations or you know, who knows a planet could even get raised uh, but that would all be kind of the uh, I guess overall manipulation of the of the full PU to you know riff off what all the players are doing out there, kind of what the AI is doing in its sort of systemic way. And then we sort of, you know, like throwing a pebble into a smooth pond, put a few pebbles here and there to create ripple effects to, uh, you know, create a little interest. So uh, yes, we will definitely be doing that. Um, all right, next question comes from Eth9, who asks, I would like to know what the reasoning is behind moving forward with concept designs of other ships when we still have ships like the Freelancer variants and Redeemer still not flight ready and in our hangars. The reason why we're doing that is because, well, it's, so the people that actually are building the ships to put them into the game are a completely different group of people than who do the sort of concept and design of ships. And the reason why we're continuing to concept ships now is because uh, the whole idea is, you know, with the universe, especially once it's up and running, it's going to be like the real world. You know, there'll be different, you know, new models of ships coming out and new variations and things for people to earn money towards so they can, you know, buy this new ship that comes out or buy this new gun or, you know, buy a little piece of real estate. I mean, you know, everyone needs goals uh, for the game. And so we want to keep a constant supply of ships and weapons and other features uh, for people to, uh, you know, work towards acquiring and then use in the game. And so we really need to keep the pipeline going. So there's been a few cases where we just stopped on the pipeline and then it kind of dried up for a while, uh, which isn't a, a good thing. So you'll see now that we're pretty steadily develop, delivering uh, ships into the hangar and delivering ships into a flyable state because we have a pretty large team of 3D modelers and technical artists are all working on the ships and uh, technical designers all setting them up. And uh, the concept side is sort of the front end of that pipeline. So we're continuing to sort of flesh out the various uh, ships that we think we want in the ecosystem because you want to fly around in the universe of Star Citizen and it should feel like a busy, alive universe with you know, variety and all sorts of things, whether it's ships or equipment you can use or even races. Uh, we want to feel it, make it teeming and real and it's been there for, you know, well, I mean, hundreds, millions of years. It, feel, it should feel like a, a living, breathing universe. And so as part of that, we need the complete um, uh, pipeline to carry on because right now, if we don't do some of the concepts, by the time some of the, model the modelers are finished, they won't have new stuff to roll onto. So that's kind of uh, the plan that is sort of uh, encompassed. And so uh, we continue to work on some of the concept stuff to make sure that we have a pipeline and some of the ships that uh, maybe not in the hangar right now, um, are you know, already uh, sort of in process in the background with uh, the modeling team. So uh, that is why to uh, maintain the pipeline because our goal is for the, you know, basically to constantly adding content even when the game is you know, what we would consider you know, live release or whatever, uh, we constantly will be adding all sorts of things to it. So, you know, content in terms of ships and equipment, uh, clothes, characters, uh, missions, um, you know, star systems, all those sort of things. And, and functionality and features will continue to add. And, and part of that is ships, which is uh, why you have uh, concepts happening as well as uh, the modeling. So uh, different folks, uh, one isn't blocking the other, I guess would be the easy way to answer that. All right, next question comes from Elwood Short, uh, who asks, I have recently bought a ship bundle pack, combo war pack, 
Thank you very much, Howard Short. Uh, but unfortunately, I discovered that I can only use five hangar bays, so I can't have all my ships out at once, even close to all of them. Will the hangars be able to be made bigger in time, or will renting extra hangar space be an in-game feature? Longer term, absolutely being able to uh, rent and get bigger hangar space will be something that we will have as a game feature. Um, also, I think, uh, depending on how you play, you may actually want to have some of your ships in various areas around the universe. So depending, I mean, obviously, when we just have the Stanton system, there isn't as much need for that as possible. But, um, you know, as you can already see, there's, there's different kinds of gameplay based on different kinds of ships. So, you know, like, you know, Hornet's great for dogfighting, but it's really, well, it can't carry cargo. So, you know, you may need a cargo ship, you know, Starfarer or a hull C or D, but you may also want to go and do a mercenary mission, and that may mean that you want to take a Hornet or something like that with it. So the, I, you know, and, and, you know, maybe there's some missions or adventures you want to do on one side of the, the uh, sort of known UE universe, and maybe there's some stuff you want to do over here. So uh, I definitely could see at the point that, you know, you've acquired a fair amount of wealth in the game and a fair amount of ships, you may actually have, uh, you know, ver just like rich people do in the world now, they have houses in different cities. Um, I think, you know, you potentially could have hangars in different planets uh, with some of the ships you have. So depending on uh, where you are, you'll always have somewhere you can go quickly to switch out a ship because you're only ever going to be able to switch your ships uh, based on where they are in the hangar. So, you know, if I am operating seven systems away from my home base and I've got 20 ships in my home hangar and I want to change out one of my ships, I have to go all the way back to my home base or have someone fly it out to me uh, to change out that ship. So a lot of times I would think if you said, oh, I'm going to operate in this system and do some trading here, you may want to, um, you know, have a sort of almost forward operating base that you have some of uh, your ships. So I definitely think you'll be able to rent stuff and have, uh, more, um, you know, and customize your hangar too. So um, in the persistent stuff that we're doing, um, that we're still gonna start to roll out, uh, you are gonna be able to customize your hangar in terms of placing where your flare is, and eventually sort of expand it out and, uh, you know, buy some extra space or extra rooms and do all that. And then the only caveat I would have is, is essentially sort of a rendering caveat. So there's all, at some point, you know, if you had 70 ships and you wanted to see them all in one long run, that's probably uh, more than you know we could render at once, which is one of the reasons why we had limited hangars to a certain extent, and then you could pick which ships you could have in the hangars, um, just essentially to um, you know not have the machine go to five frames a second. Um, now we're optimizing things, so we'll, that will definitely be bigger, but uh, there probably you know there's not likely uh, to be a case where you would have. You know, this sort of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark hangar that goes as far as you possibly can see with as many ships as you can see. Well, but, you know, I will promise that we will try to get as many ships in as we can. Um, so ultimately, I think it will move towards something uh, that you would like, although I'm not sure it could have every single ship in it. But, uh, it, you know, it potentially will. Of course, the hangars won't be able to have the very biggest ships in because they'll sort of have to stay in orbit. Um, but anyway, there you go. Not sure if that answer helped you out that much, but. That's kind of what the, the plan is. All right, last question comes from WLB, who asks, given that spaceport security and armstance, armistance zones are meant to protect against griefing, would it be possible for a really skilled or coordinating team of players to circumvent that security for nefarious purposes? Like, say, a handful of players role-playing as violent extremists who want to stage a terrorist attack on terror. That is an interesting uh, question. I would say that... There will be places that it will be almost impossible to do anything in, and then there will be places where there is security in armstrong zones that if you're very determined and uh, you know, shut down security systems and do everything else, you could potentially cause some mayhem, and we'll sort of gradually sort of build that in such a way that like, so, so probably doing it in the terrorist attack on terror is gonna be out of the question, uh, but there may be some, say, space stations or stuff that are sort of, kind of in between where maybe the security isn't, it's not as close to the sort of power of the UEE, uh, although it does have security and law enforcement, but a determined group of pirates could for a very short period of time cause some mayhem there. And it'll sort of be, you know, we'll have a few of those, we'll have some safe places, and then we'll have some completely unsafe places. Uh, and probably the risk reward of all those places will sort of be factored in. So you probably can make the most money in these sort of unsafest areas, 
but of course there's a higher risk. Uh, and the safe areas, you don't make as much money, say trading or doing stuff, but it's, a, it's pretty safe and you're not likely to be attacked. And if you are attacked, um, you know, there's a lot of backup and help that would show up. So, uh, you know, but we will make it so that, you know, for instance, uh, you know, perhaps there could be a uh, heist in a really like, you know, like something like the Terra system um, for like a cargo ship full of, I don't know, gold bullion or something. But that heist would have to be incredibly well planned. You know, think of it like the heat heist at the beginning of the film Heat with, um, you know, De Niro and Pacino. Um, the way you'd have to take down all the security systems and do all this and coordinate and do it all at once. Um, and you'd have a window of a very small amount of time before you get away with the loot. And those kind of heists would be much more um, kind of MPC AI driven in terms of what you're heisting. So like maybe that shipment is something that's getting shipped from the Bank of Terror to somewhere else and someone gets wind of it as a criminal mission. And then of course, there could also be players and other AI that also perform security. And so you know, that would be really hard to do, but if you manage to do it, the payoff would be really big. Uh, and of course, you also have the risk of you know, being a wanted person and all the rest of stuff. So we'll, we'll sort of build those aspects in. So we're gonna have areas that will let uh, that kind of gameplay work. And uh, you know, like I said, potentially there can be some less safe um, uh, space stations, but there will definitely always be some places that we're just not gonna let you go in and, and destabilize. So like Terror, Earth, those kind of ones will pretty much be uh, you know, pretty safe havens. And even when you go down onto them, you'll, you know, to pass through the sort of customs or immigration, you'll have to um, you know, cash in or pass in your weapons that you have or can't take any weapons with you and they'll scan you going through. I think if you look at the Art Corp, you'll sort of see the scanner set up and everything. So you have to land on the outside, you pass through customs and uh, it's all sort of secure. And then there'll be some places that won't have that. Like, you know, I would definitely think that um, you know, Nix, uh, or what really Levski would be less secure in the long run. Uh, and that would have more sort of um, kind of law on the ground, so to speak. So if you went in there and everyone took a gun and they started shooting, then you know, maybe uh, the local police guys would come after you. But that's sort of the things that we'll play with. So there'll definitely be places that will be safe and there'll definitely be places that won't be safe. And that'll be kind of up to you and what sort of challenge you're interested in. All right, I think that's the uh, 10 questions. So. Uh, Hope they helped out. Hope uh, some of those were interesting. Uh, thank you guys very much for uh, subscribing and supporting us in doing all this enhanced community content. I say this every time, but uh, the fact that we do all this constant communication, uh, we try uh, to find new ways to do it, uh, is one of the reasons why I think Star Citizen is so successful is because you guys are you know, along the ride with us as we're making this incredibly ambitious game. Uh, we couldn't do it without you, so thank you very much for that. And uh, you know, our sort of determination is to share as much as possible with you. Uh, you know, having the interaction, you guys testing the game on the PTU and even on the live uh, releases, giving feedback helps us hone and change and 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 you know, basically work the game in the direction I think will be. Uh, just a great experience and uh, so it's a really fun way to make a game actually uh, seeing it sort of grow up in front of your eyes and having everyone sort of contribute um, so um, thank you guys very much thank you for everyone out there that's backed and I'll see you next week Hey guys, thanks for watching um, Ten for the Chairman. Uh, if you guys would like to uh, see more episodes, go here. If you guys would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel and always keep up to date with all our video content, go here. And uh, if you guys would like to watch episodes of Around the Verse, go here, please. And I will see you in the verse.